Okay. All right. I, I think we can get started. Um, and this is kind of a, a warm up assignment so that um, everybody can just get the feel for getting back. I mean, I know you've probably been, maybe you've been painting uh, all along the way since the spring, but if you haven't, um, know that this is the warm up to the bigger paintings that are being done. And I'm introducing, they're, they're a little more challenging, but that's okay. You do it at your level, whatever level you're at, you do it at your level. Um, it is watercolors. You can use tube watercolors. You can use pan watercolors, whatever suits you and whatever suits your budget. Okay. Um, today I'm going to be doing, uh, introducing uh, three different um, kind of watercolor techniques and, and I'd like you to try them. Uh, you might find them uh, interesting and, uh, and also, I have asked um, for you to uh, see if you can find a, an ink tense pencil, I N K T E N S E. And if you can get it in black, that would be wonderful. That's also on the uh, information sheet. So I'll get that out to you if you don't have it. Um, so welcome to everyone. And I'm going to go right to the, um, right to the table here because I want to, I want to get started. Okay. okay, it looks a bit it looks a bit messy at the moment, but uh, let me let me start out with uh, one at a time. I think that that'll be good. But we'll have three to do. Okay, the first one is kind of abstract in feel, but it's a lot of fun. And what happens here is that uh, you, whatever your sheet is, whatever size is, I have a narrow sheet here, and uh, I've used. For an inspiration, I've used these two leaves. One is this one and one is this one. I'm not sure of the trees, but uh, if you know, that's great. If you don't, that's okay too. Okay, so what happens is you, and I'm going to be doing this with you, um, and I'm doing this one first because it has to dry. Um, what happens is you're gonna take a plan, plain sheet. Let me get this off of here. And We're going to be doing some um, colors, and what you can do is, if you have leaves, that's great. If you if you didn't get any yet, you know, pick them up and uh, see what colors inspire you. What I when I looked at these two leaves, I saw reds, I saw some greens, and and then I went with just something really bright and fun. So that's what this first one is about. It's a little abstract and it's a little bright and fun. So on this particular one, I'm gonna use two other colors. And, um, and there doesn't have to be any rhyme or reason of how the colors are put on. It's just because uh, you're making, you're making um, a background and that's what you should be doing. So here I've put some purple on. I don't know, it's sort of a fun, bright color. Okay, then, uh, and try not to make it too wet like I've done. <laughs> And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use an orange, I believe, with this. I think that those two are kind of cool together. And, you know, you can put it in, make a line, make a circle, whatever. These, this is just for, you know, what's going to, what's going to show through. So this is kind of a, a, a fun feel. And it would be nice if you didn't use, you know, too many colors. I try to keep it to two or three tops. So there's purple, there's orange. And I think I'm gonna just add a couple dabs of a yellow, which I think are, you know, they look good together. And put them in and you can you can make them go over. You know, they can go over what, you're, what you've already painted. You don't wanna make it a, a, a too messy because then the colors end up uh, blobbing together. Okay, so that's really your first step. Now I'm gonna just, let that dry and we're going to go what happens after this is once this is dry then we're going to take the shapes and you can do and you can cut these out these are exactly the shapes of the leaves you just take some black or any kind of uh, construction paper scraps and you're going to cut them out just like that cut them out exactly the same shape and then this is another one it's the same the same shape as this leaf. All I did was trace around it and cut it out. So now I have these two pieces. 
So what happens after this is dry, these become kind of our stencil windows on what happens under, and, and a lot of what's underneath here is gonna show through. And you can put them wherever you want them. You can have one that bleeds off, you can have here, you can repeat that one again. So I'll show you the next step in this one. So this is our, our first one, and I'm gonna call this uh, abstraction because it, it is kind of an abstraction based on something real. Okay, so that's one. Oh, let me ask, is there any questions to this point? Anybody? So this is kind of the next step of what's gonna happen. First, you put on color, you let it dry, then we're gonna work with our stencils, okay? So let me put that aside. <coughs> One moment. So hopefully I'm gonna put this right in front of the window and let's see how fast it'll dry. Hopefully, hopefully, you never know. It's kind of dreary today and kind of humid in a way, but we'll see what happens. Okay, uh, technique number two is this one. And it looks a little involved, but it's actually, it's actually not involved. Um, I'm using here a large oak tree, an oak tree, <laughs> a large oak tree and a maple leaf. And what happens is, I'm I'm, this I'm going to do right along with you, but I wanna explain it first so we can see this is sort of in work and then we're gonna do it, um, I'm gonna do it with you. Um, here, we're gonna be actually uh, going around the shape of the leaf, laying water down, and then dropping color into the water, which is wet on wet in a way. And you can then go back and score things with a stick. We know the scoring. If you don't know scoring, you're gonna see it again. If you do know it, you'll do very well with it. Um, and then this is the black intense pencil around here. And it could easily be done in black paint if you want. But what I wanted to show you, and I've done a little bit more of putting it in here. It, on watercolor paper, it actually has a tooth to it. So you're gonna see that it comes up with kind of a pattern, you know, a, a texture underneath there. So, and depending on how, how hard you put it on, it will depend on how dark it's going to be. And the Karen, yes, sorry. Uh, this is Camille. May yes. we use charcoal, a charcoal pencil? Well, it's not going to dissolve if you use that. Oh. That's okay. the that's the reason for this pencil. I'm just it's this it's a new addition to what we're what we're doing with watercolor, and it works with watercolor. But you could easily use uh, paint. You could use you know black paint, or mm -hmm. you can mix, uh, you can mix uh, umber with um, a blue, those two, brown and blue together, and that would do just as well, exactly. But I'm, I'm introducing this because I think it adds something to the, uh, you know, brings something to the party. So after you, you put the pencil on, it's a very unusual feel to it, but I'm gonna show you what happens. It, it, it really kind of melts down and it's, it's pretty um, interesting the way it works and I thought that you know it's dramatic of course and by the way these ink tense pencils come in all colors I'm using black because I, I wanted to simplify the method uh right away just so you, you don't uh, you know have a lot to deal with at first and you can get one pencil you can get a set of pencils but uh, I think the pencils each are like four dollars but you see how that and what happens when it dries back is it will, um, there'll be a pattern in there. I'm gonna do a little more so you can see that again. But, uh, Karen, yes. what's the difference between that and a watercolor pencil? It just has, it's kind of like a clay uh, base to it. it. It doesn't feel, uh, the minute you do it, the minute you touch it and you feel it, you'll say, oh my goodness, I know exactly what she means. But until that happens, it, uh, in fact, when you sharpen it, do not, do not use a, a sharp, a pencil sharpener. You must do it with like a, you know, a blade because it's very soft inside uh. and uh, it will uh, ruin the pencil. So always sharpen it with a blade. But here I'm just getting, I'm getting some more on here so that you can, 
you know, get a, a feel for what it, what it feels like. But it's really, it, I hate to use this word, but cool. <laughs> it's, it's very cool. And it's, it adds another dimension to watercolor. It's uh, an interesting way to go. So there I put some more on. Let me move this down so you can see a little better. Okay, so I've put more on. Here you see where I've added the water. Now here, and depending on how you want the feel, like say you didn't want it to be real opaque, maybe you want it to be more translucent. Um, you can actually get in there and just make it less. You can add a little less water. You can have a lighter touch, a lighter touch meaning how much you're, you're holding back on the brush with your hand. Now here I've backed up a little bit and made it a little you know, less dense. But uh, it has a, a, really, a really unique feel and I think you'll enjoy using it once you try. Now here, it, it was lighter. So you can always go back and add more. And if you want drama, I mean, this is all about drama with the black for sure. But maybe, you know, maybe you're not into that, you know, into that look, but I'd love you to try it just once to get a, a sense of it. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to remove this, uh, this page. Oh, any questions on this so far? Okay. Well, you can have questions all along the way. I'll, I'll look at the, I'll look at the chat and we'll let this dry. And I'll, Karen. Know. Yes. The black lines that are kind of outlining the leaves. Yes. Are those lines the ink tense as well? They are. They okay. are. What I wanted to do was I wanted to like stop the uh, water from going into the painted area. So that's why it's sort of like a little barrier, a little barrier there. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this kind of hanging on the side here. And I'm going to show you how this went from the very beginning. Okay, so, you know, here's this big oak guy. I'm going to be doing this faster than I would suggest that you do it, because otherwise, you know, we don't have enough time for everything. So, but I want it to be enough time so that it's, uh, why don't you just go around? I mean, you could sit and draw these leaves if you so, in, in fact, want to. The third uh, example I'm doing today will be one that is drawn. So, and it's drawn with this pencil, but it has, it has a totally different look about it. So this is something new to add to your uh, techniques with watercolor so that if you can grow and, and have uh, other things in your repertoire. Okay. So I'm doing this kind of quickly. Now, if you didn't want this technique, and you wanted to just paint the leaves and work wet on wet, that's okay too. But try to experience this even if you only do it with one leaf, because it's it's a good thing. Okay, so there's Mr. Uh, Mr. Oak. Okay, and then I, and just to be you know a little interesting, I I did put the maple on an angle, running the other way. So here's uh. Here's the, and you'll find when you use this pencil, it has a very, very soft lid. So it, you don't have to, uh, you know, press dip, uh, real hard on it. Okay. So around we go. Okay. Now the next step is going to be, whoops, just the spot there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have the two leaves. And what I want to say about these leaves is the colors that I ended up using were a little bit um, enhanced because I, when I was looking for leaves in the park, uh, it's just too early for the bright colored leaves. So they're not out there. So I just uh, used my artistic license. Okay. Now, now we're going to get to the uh, actual paint part of this. Um, let's see. Okay, but what, what I want you to do first before you put any paint on is I want you to put water on. So now I'm gonna have to angle this up a bit flat so that the, the paint doesn't, doesn't run down. Is that still okay viewing wise? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Okay. All right. So now just water inside. Try not to touch the, uh, if you can, the, the black on this because it would, uh, it would start to melt down. But, you know, just, and it would, it's not the end of the world if it does touch it, but it's better if it does. Okay, so here's water inside the maple. And then I'm going to, uh, boy, that's crazy loud, that thing. Let me turn that down. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to actually uh, drop paint in on this one. So I'm going to start out with this, uh, this I call it Q Gold, because it has a really long name and why. Mm. I have to remember that. Okay, so now dropping this in, that's what you need to do. You need to drop it in and you need to let it flow. Let it flow. Okay. Karen, are these yes. colors you've mixed or colors straight out of the tube or pan or whatever? Well, I'm not mixing them yet, but I, I could. I could mix them. Let me let me back this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. These are out of the tube, but uh, some of them will be mixed. But just for expedience sake, I'm using them. Then uh, I think I have a... Um, a Chinese orange here, and this is one that's out of the tube, but it's it's really beautiful, and it, uh, it says fall, and once again into the water, into your, and one thing, paint will not go where there isn't any water. Paint will not go where there isn't any water, so it will not travel without outside where where I have the water and where I have the intense pencil. Okay, so now. That's uh, so. What you've done is you've just put water down, and you put uh, some of your paint colors down. Um, I I want to do one other thing here. I want to put a little bit of uh, red for a little drama. So I'm gonna drop that in there. Now say it's it, it sort of stops flowing. Well, the answer to that is just add a little more water, and you can make it start flowing again. Now, what if you get pooling, which there's quite a bit of pooling on here. Now, if we have a, long, a lot of time, the pooling would be desirable, but because it, it has a natural flow to it. But um, since we don't, I don't want a lot of pooling because it won't dry. It'll, it'll hang out too long. Okay. Now, maybe it needs some darks. And I think I've said this before, but when you're dealing with uh, any kind of painting, um, and, and values, whether it's light, medium, dark. Um, the idea of uh, having, um, let's see, having some darks in here is a, is a good idea. So I looked at the leaf again, let me bring this back into view, and there's some, you know, there's some dark on the edges. So I'm just gonna bring in some browns here because it seems like they, they're brown along the edges at times. And don't worry what's happening. Let it just flow. And, and this is this is a warm up. This is something that, goodness, if you're happy with the results, then that's great. If, if you're not, try it again. Okay, now we're going to go to the um, oak leaf. Okay. Same, same process. Um, putting water down, and it should be clean. This is a little bit tinted, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll make it work. And if you notice in this leaf, I can't put this, um, it's, it's mostly, you know, mostly um, brown, but it has green and gold. So we can, and this is something that it's, you know, there's no strict rules here. I just want you to experience dropping paint into a wet surface and what happens. And it seems like leaves are a great subject for this. You can't do it with everything you paint. Some kind of some flowers you can, if you want that you know petally soft look about it. But um, if you're doing something that's rigid and you want it to be more exacting, then this is not the technique for that. Okay, so that now has water all over. In fact, that it has a tint is okay because it makes it better for you to see. And you can put some water in the stem. Don't worry that the Inktense pencil bleeds a little bit because uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be adding some color to that anyway, over top. Okay, so I'm gonna try uh, 
a little lighter palette, a little different palette on this. So now I'm going to go to the lemon yellows and that to start because this has a very golden underfeel to me. So I'm going to put this in here, let it just bleed. Let it go all around. See how it, you know, sometimes it makes absolutely beautiful patterns. Sometimes it doesn't <laughs> and it drips. Now I see a lot of um, green and orange in this one. So I'm gonna go, kind of go with that. So let me get some uh, green. This is like bright green, like a yellow green. <coughs> It'd be you know, interesting with this color. And uh, you know, just drop it. You can drop it right on top of the yellow. You can, you know, sort of go where it's where it's not so it shows up more uh you'll notice that, th that there are blemishes in this uh, in this leaf you know there's spots and and blemishes well that's okay that's fun you know it's, it's okay it's nature it's not perfect okay so here we go okay so i think i have on my two base colors there and what i'd like to do is now add some browns so that I can get some uh, depth. Let me move this one out of the way so we can turn this over so we can see where we are. Now oh, that's better. Okay, and then I'll just move this down. Ah, pretty good there. I'm pretty good. Okay, now, and this is this should be really fun and freeform and not stressful at all. Okay, now I'm going to go to. Um, Believe it or not, this color, it's called Potter's Pink. Um, I don't know why. It doesn't remind me. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it reminds me of terracotta a little bit. But uh, it's an unusual color. It's something that you really would have trouble mixing. But I'm going to drop it in here and see, see where it goes. And it is traveling down there. And once again, now I see it like a kind of a spot here. So I'm going to just make a round shape. And then there's another, there's another spot here. There's a couple of spots. And towards the ends, I think I said it on the first one, on the maple, the ends tend to go brown. I guess that's how it just, uh... now, is anybody painting along? Yes. No. No? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes? Oh, good. Okay. Well, then you should be having a good time. Okay. Now, at this point, at this point, um, you can stop with your color. You can continue on. You can add more. In fact, you know, I think this needs a little bit of like a, a kind of a purple color in here a little bit. Not much, but when you're doing values, Remember that darks, darks can be your friend. They, they show emphasis, they show uh, distinct distinction. So don't be afraid. Now, I think that's kind of cool looking. I like, I like what's happening. I think there's a little bit too much pooling. So you rinse your brush and you dry it a bit and then you lay it on top of where it's pooling and it will lift, it will lift the paint right off. Lift the water, lift the paint. Now you can see, you can notice it's kind of spidery in some spots. It's kind of, um, you know, the colors are mixing together in some spots. It, it has a really interesting feel. You see this one's pulling a bit too down here. That's probably because it's on an angle. I think the angle is better for the camera. Okay, at this point, at this point, I need you to pick up your scoring stick if you're working with a stick. I can find mine, that would be great. Let's see. Score the stick. Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay, let me get another one. Okay. At this point, I want you to take note of the um, of the veins in the leaves. Okay. Looking at the maple, because we'll go back, this is a little bit real, real wet. Okay, starting at the, at the top, I want you to score down all the way to the stem. 
four down. And depending on the uh, strength of your scoring, whether it's deep or whether you back off, is how is how much the vein will show up. So and always follow follow nature. See what it says. You know, see what it's telling you. It doesn't have to be super accurate. It just has to uh, imitate. So there we go. Now um, I can see some other smaller ones coming off of here. I can see some real spidery ones that are not really connecting to anything. But what happens is when this dries, it's kind of magical what happens. The paint finds its way into these veins and it has a very realistic feel to it. You see? Okay, now the same one with the top. It's a little wetter. But that's okay. You're going to see where the vein starts. It comes right from the stem. This one is a little more um, off track. It's not as straight, but it goes all the way up to the tip. And here you're going to go out. And you're going to go out to the other one. Up to here. Up to here. And the paint that's on there some of it will flow into these grooves, which is kind of groovy. <laughs> There's a oh, 60s word. Okay. And then um, I don't really see one going down to this small one. Here's one that's coming up here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have some that go all the way out. And depend, like I say, depending on the strength of your scoring will make a difference to, um, to how the the vein appears, but can you, you can see that, right? You can see the veins in, within the leaves. Okay, so now this one, pardon me? Somebody have a question? No, okay. So based on the first one that we did, which we just laid down color, it's not quite dry enough, but uh, it's getting there, it's getting there. So we'll let that sit for a little while longer. Now at this point, it would be good for this to dry before we actually get in there and do the uh, the pencil work on it. But uh, here we go, because it's just it's just easier for that to happen. But you can either use an ink tense pencil, like I did on the first one. You have choices, and that's what I like to give you. I like to give you choices because you like to work different ways. But when you're learning a new technique, it's always good to try it one time and you know you may be really uh, enthralled with it you may really like it you may find different ways to do it you may build this where it's uh dark in this corner whoops how could you see that when it's off the, off the board you could go dark in this corner with the ink tense pencil lighter all the way up here so it looks like it's going from light to dark which could be really be cool in fact maybe we'll look we'll, why this is drying a little bit I'm going to try that on this one. So now this is very dark. This is very dark in this in this corner down here. But what if we just did a lighter version? Came up here, and this takes a bit of practice. Like like anything new that you're learning, you know, you can uh, just have a lighter touch all the way up to the top. And maybe it even, you know, it even stops. So here you, you want it to be a little darker because it's dark to the right side. So you want to you want to carry that a little bit. But here you have the leaf in, in position. So just you know, just try it. And and it, this is kind of um, you know an experiment, and it's an experiment with your. Uh, desire in mind like what, what do you, how do you want it to really look okay so now that we have that on there in a lighter touch I'm going to just wet like the brush and then I'm going to just you know go over it and work away from your, your actual drawing it's nice that this is kind of lighter in touch and then you can, what I like about this is that you can have the texture underneath there for some reason I I sort of like that if you don't you can just go over it if you don't like the texture but I think it adds interest 
it adds interest. And I'll tell you, if you get the other colors, you know, there's no, nothing wrong with this being, you know, what if it was blue? So, or what if it was dark green? Wouldn't that be handsome? Okay. So there's going from dark to light. And you can, you know, you can experiment and see how you like it, see how you don't like it. But uh, that's, the, that's the feel of what happens there. And depending on what angle, oh, but the other thing, you can, um, you know, you can even make a pattern in here. Like say, you know, I wanted to do something where there were, you know, there was a, a definite, um, a definite pattern in the background. You can go over it in while it's wet. This might, this might be kind of, kind of cool. I've never tried this before, but. Hey, there's a first time for everything. And then you might you might find something that you absolutely love. It, 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 can, it can happen. And you should not be afraid to try. This is about. We're going to be doing the other two paintings that I have um, in mind for this class um, are kind of realistic, but we're doing some that have buildings in them and some one that's interior and one that's an exterior but i'm going to deal a little bit with perspective and uh you know it's just some interesting things so you know whether you like this or not it, it might it might work for you it might not work for you i i have a feeling i might like this if i spent if i spent a lot of time with it and and really looked at it there's something interesting about that okay? now karen yeah. On the right side, that yeah. light smooth gray in the middle, on the right side, that right right where your pencil was, oh, down right here. there. Here, here. Yeah. How'd you get that so solid without showing any, um, any background? I just, what I did was I took some of the um, uh, area here and just painted it in. So I just took some from here and put it into there. That's a really good question. Who is that? Sue. Hi, Sue. Okay, if you wanted it to be smoother, you could use the Intense Pencil on the side where, you know, on another piece of paper, dip your brush in, and that's what would happen. Oh. So okay. you can get a texture, you can get a pattern, you can get a, a deeper tone. You know, there's lots of things happening here that, uh, you know, could, could look good. This needs more work, obviously. But, uh, you know, I think it's interesting things going on. So, okay. Karen. Yeah? Given the, the name of them, call, calling them ink tents, does that mean it's, it's going to be more permanent than your watercolor colors? Um, Is it, does it have, like, ink in it? or? You know, I, I'm not sure about that, but I think there's got to be a stronger pigment. It's got to be stronger pigment. And it doesn't lift off, as far as I can see, on anything I've worked on. Okay. So I think it, I think it, it is more permanent, and there is more pigment. So that, that's a good question as well. Okay. And, you know, you, you can try it. it. It's an interesting look. It's, it has an, uh, a nice feel about it. Um, it's a little mysterious, you know, rather than just painting the leaves as is. Okay. Now, speaking of that, let me go back to where we were here. Okay. Now, um, I could in a way, you know, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show you, uh, Sue, you just asked that question about what, how do you get that smooth? So now I have a piece of paper here, extra, and I'm gonna take the Intense Pencil and, you know, put some real strength into that. And then take my brush and then you'll see that, you see what it does? It is, and it is more, I believe, more permanent. And and just, it just adds another uh, feel to what you're working on. And you can go back and go back just as you would in a, a gray watercolor, I guess, and, you know, add as much or little as you want. Mm. See? And then if you wanted it to be darker along one area or not, that would be, that would be okay. See, but that um, that's definitely uh, smoother. 
Sanitize this stuff. part reminds me of the sumi Japanese. Yes, yes absolutely. Sumi Japanese inks. Yes, it does. Yes, absolutely. I think these are a little more controllable. You know, not crazy. Not, you know, not a lot of control, but you know, it's, it's something to work with. Now, I, now that you've said that, I, I sort of left some, you know, dark and light areas and I sort of am liking that feel to it. I think that has a, a very nice, uh, a nice look about it. And oh, you know what, there's some of this, uh, some of this color is kind of coming into play. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave this because you've seen what happened over here. You know what that's about. You know that you can create a texture. You can have dark, dark. You can have a smoother look. I'm going to leave this for a minute and go to the last, the last uh, example for today with leaves. And I hope you try these. And then before we leave, of course, I'm going to uh, go back to that first one. The last one I have going is a uh, straight drawing. And here's here's the drawing. And here is the, here's the uh, model. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, two maple leaves connected by, I don't know whether you guys have seen so many seeds out in the park. So, there's clusters, crazy clusters of these, um, you know, seedlings that are getting ready for next year. But uh, let me let me get another clean piece of paper and I'm gonna show you how to absolutely start drawing with the ink tense pencil right from a drawing, not uh, not going around anything, but I'm gonna take off this one off the block so we can go back to that in a minute because it's gonna be dry in a few minutes. Dry enough to do what we need to do. Okay, so here's the model. I'm gonna move these down a little bit so that, you know, so here's my drawing, here's my model, and here's my new piece of paper. Okay, so we have step-by-step -step here. And what I did here was, okay. Now, you know what I'm gonna to have to do? I'm going to have to just, uh, in fact, this might be a good thing to show. Here's the Intense Pencil. And here's the way you have to sharpen it. Okay, you need a blade. You need to carefully, you know, take the, take the uh, outside lead off. And it's very, very soft. The lead inside is very soft. So in order for you to have a pencil left after. <laughs> after I guess you should use that for charcoal pencils too. Yeah, you know what? I think that's probably a good idea. Because they always break. If it, yes, if it's soft enough, absolutely. That, who was that? Sue. Oh, Sue, okay. All right, so now I'm, I'm ready to look at this from a drawing standpoint. And I wanna tell you about like contour drawing, which is what, how I approach this from the very beginning. It's a really good habit to get into because it, it sort of holds you in when you, when you want to create uh, the shape of something. Okay, so with the Intense Pencil, I'm going to start at the very tip of that, of that leaf, come down. I see it bumping out here, bumping out, going up to the top, coming down and around, a little bit of bump there, going back into where the stem is. Here, down, around. And this is not, this is not a scientific way to draw. This is, <coughs> this is just, it sort of sets you free a little bit, but it gives you a sense of, you know, what something looks like. And I think, I think it's a really um, very helpful thing. And in this case, I'm going to very lightly put in these uh, veins. I'm going to lightly put them in because I'm going to be adding paint on top of here directly. There's no water first, it's painting directly. Now, when you come here, you can see that this has a stem, which makes, and it's connected to this like branchy thing that comes across. So I'm gonna put the branchy piece in and I'm going to make it come across. Now, 
seeing this big cluster, you go, oh my God, where do I begin? Well, you begin where you want and you take and use what you want. So when I'm looking at the space between where the end of the leaf is and where this first, uh, I'm gonna call it uh, seedling. I'm gonna call it a seedling. Well, it's attached to there. There's two attached to there. So it sort of has this round thing. And then it has like a, a butterfly wing coming off of it and back. Same thing, this one right up here. I'm gonna take the ones I like. This one's attached. And I'm gonna go around again and back in. There's a little one sticking out. I like that, so I'm gonna put that in. Okay, now there's a lot of these little branchy things that are attached. And what you can do is look for the ones that talk to you. What it, which ones do you, do you like and do you want to put in? There's one here that's attached, goes over that, and then comes up. I have it overlapping now, but that's okay. And just give yourself a little, and this you work very lightly with the pencil. Um, here, there's another one here. And this is just a, a kind of a discerning time when you decide. This is your decision, what you want to put in, what you don't. Now I'm looking at these two down here because they're kind of attached. So I'm going to put them in. Here's one. They're like twins. And it goes off. Goes off the page. And then here. So this is contour drawing. Looking. There's nothing underneath. You're just directly working with your um, with your intense pencil, and lightly, you know, lightly approach it. Now, here's the stem coming down to the other leaf. I'm looking. What I'm looking for here is what is the distance between here and here. Is that enough distance? I think so. Here's the upper part of the leaf. Over, up, down, in, over, up, down. Now this looks a little big, but that's okay. I, I sort of, I'm digging that. And then here, because this really should be a fun time. In and back to the stem. Same thing here, very lightly. Put in your veins. Okay. Okay. Now this one doesn't have any seedlings. So, and I'm going to leave, uh, I think that there's another one because that's sticking out over there. I think this needs another seedling top over here. But right now that's all I'm going to do. I, I don't think there might be another, uh, because just, just to add interest, there might be another connecting thing. But that's the way that drawing is. You can actually get in here and really lightly put in your veins because this is a point in this kind of this example where you need you need the drawing in there. Okay, so here. Karen, another yeah. question? Sure. Um, this is the other Sue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, any 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 Sue will do. <laughs> um, where are you holding the pencil? In the middle, the end, or you see, I'm halfway back. I'm okay. halfway back. It's not this where you're super deliberate and tight. It's back halfway. That's a really good question because that will allow you the freedom. That, you <clears throat> that allows the freedom, which is an important, an important thing in this kind of a drawing. Okay. So yeah. you, have model, you have your added paint and then here's where, where the drawing was. Okay. I'm going to try to... Um, Adds some color to this now so you can see what happens. In this case, I used uh, pretty close to what was happening in the leaf because I wanted it to be uh, more realistic, I guess. It's not super realistic, but it, it is realistic in a way. Okay. All right. So I had a little, um, I think this is hooker's green. And then I think I may have added some other greens to it but I wanted to I wanted it to have a little bit of life but more than what the actual leaf has you can see this has a little more life to it because what happens when you put the paint on I have to put something here to prop this up Let me move this over everybody can see okay and keep in mind too when you're adding the paint you know keep in mind what's happening you know don't don't try to fill in every every portion with uh, 
the the real sign of a, a watercolor is is a few sparkly whites here and there. So leave those in there. That that's okay. You know, leave, leave them in there. Okay, I'm going to add the same green to the bottom while I have it ready. And, um, and this is the same thing, holding the brush at, at uh, not real tight to the end, holding the brush. And I'm using a, a, a bigger brush than you know you would think you'd have to. Uh, this is uh, number 10, number 10. And I like it because it, ha it holds a lot of paint yet it has a very fine point if you need to get into a small area. See that? There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to go right away to adding some brown in there. Because I, I don't want it to bleed, super bleed, but I want it to be integrated to, uh, to show the color that works well with it. Okay. So here, I notice on the leaf, you know, that again, there's, you know, there's brown in here, there's brown in there, brown in here. Okay. And in this case, you know, I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't want to paint it in real seriously. Same thing down here. You know, notice if you look at the leaves, is it more concentrated in the middle? Is it, uh, you know, is it on the edges more? Where, where does it go for you? And then I come down tight to the end. Now I'm down tight because I'm doing this stem. So I want more control. Okay. Now the same thing happens with the uh, control on these on these stems, which you know I'm going to put some of those in right now. And it comes across, and then it has like a kind of a cool, funky ending there. Um, and then some of these other ones that come across and down. And there's one here, and there's a couple here. And these are like arbitrary. I mean, when you look at this conglomeration <laughs> of what's going on in there, it's uh. It's kind of messy, but you, you, know, you make a decision as to how much you want it to look like that or how much you don't want it to look like that. Okay, now in these little seedlings, I'm going to drop color into the heads of them, the round parts, so that I don't lose my place of where I am. Okay, so right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, it's good to work in odd numbers. I don't know whether you've heard that before in painting or drawing or whatever. And I'm going to go back into the wings of things here, into these wings, and just add a few textury things, because that's how they look to me when you look at them close up. Um, they have this like texture in there. OK, so now I'm going to take that same color add water and then, you know, and just pop it in and you can, you can make it dark to light. You can leave a little dark on the edge. And it's sort of, you know, it's sort of a nice painting. The other thing that's really kind of cool to do at this point, I don't know whether you can see, I'm sure you can, if, uh, there's a drop shadow running along the edges of things. And what I like to do with drop shadows is I like to take purple and mix it with something that's already in the painting. So in this case, I'm going to mix some purple with the green that I put in the leaves. And that's going to be my drop shadow. I'm going to show you a, how to do a drop shadow. OK, so here's this coming out. And then it goes along the leaf like that and in here. Now, what happens is a shadow is a shadow, so it's supposed to be soft. So when you, after you put the paint on, you want to go back just with water and you want to soften the edge. Soften the edge. So it truly looks like a drop shadow. You can see how that makes that, makes that feel. All right, so it's anything that, any color you have in your painting and you want to have a drop shadow, Use some color that's in there already. 
and then mix it with some purple. And it makes a very pleasant um, shadow color. Now this, this, the stem here, you can probably see that shadow that's running up the, the edge of it. So I'm going to put that in there. And then there's one that's kind of loopy, loopy coming in here. And once again, take just water. And when it's such a thin area, just, you know, treat it very gently. But treat it softly so that you know, you know, in fact, it's not another stem. It's a drop shadow. Okay, so that's the third one, which is direct painting with direct drawing with the Inktense pencil and uh, just contour, contour drawing. So if you try this one, you can identify it to me with uh, saying contour drawing. Any questions on that? that? Hi, Karen. It's Kathy. it's Kathy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I I, I'm sorry, I came in late. I, I had uh, some things going on. But first of all, I wanted to know how you preserve the leaves. I know it sounds like a stupid question. Secondly, I wanted to know what colors you were using and blending with. Okay, well, um, for the shadows and the blending, I was using the green from the leaf and some purple, watered down very, very carefully. Um, but well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to answer your question as soon as I can get this last example done, okay? Because we need to see what's okay. gonna happen with that. All right, let me see where those pieces went. Um, here is a, a little bit of uh, white acrylic that I'm gonna be using. And I'm just going to change the water because it's awfully brown and that would be terrible. So hang on a minute. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Did anyone else find the ink tense pencils? I found them, I'm afraid, on Amazon. You're afraid? Two. I hate to get them from Amazon, but the art store here is way too far away. I got, I got one that's a pack. It wasn't very expensive, but it had different colors in it. But did have one black uh, ink tense pen, pencil. Yeah. Lita, I think I just ordered the same thing. It was like $15 or so, exactly. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you, um, Blick, ha Blick had some uh, in Paramus and um, what do you call it? Uh, Jerry's had a couple, but, you know, if we just asked him to get more, you know, I can ask him personally to get more and uh, if you guys need them. Okay, we're back to this abstract. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to show you, I'm putting down the uh, stencils of the leaves in position. And these are the two leaves, of course. Okay. I, in this case, I'm going to brush. Well, up to now, I've been using uh, a round brush, but now we're going to go to a flat brush. And whether you use white watercolor or whether you use um, an acrylic, use it sparingly. And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna show you here. I have the flat brush. I've, I've wet my brush. I did not bring water into here. It's just the water that was on the brush that is going to be uh, make the paint uh, smooth enough to, to move. Okay, so here we go. Now these are in position. And what, what you're gonna do is you're going to actually you know what I might do is I might do something a little different here so I can, let's see. I want to see what's going to show through here. So that's the thing you can do. You can position the leaves around and see what you'd like to see. Okay, so now white on the brush, not real watery. And you're going to hold your thing in position. And you're going to go around. And it's not, uh, it's not uh, super accurate, but, um, and it's not where you're going to want to cover this thing, you know, so heavily. That's the thing. You want a little bit of what's underneath to come through. 
Okay, now we'll do the one underneath it. This also has a different, a whole different feel to, um, you know, to what, what to do with watercolors. I mean, everybody knows that, of course, there's, we'll do direct painting, we'll do contour drawing like we did with that third example. And, uh, but this one is for my abstract people that really enjoy, you know, they're, they're not hung up, they, they don't enjoy drawing as much, but they enjoy the, um, the abstraction of uh, some of the methods. So I wanted to make sure I included them. Okay. All right. now, what about just taking leaves? If you're not going to redo your leaves, what about just using the leaves as templates? Well, you, I tried that. And what happens was they, they just fell apart too readily. They, they almost disintegrated. You can try it and, you know, it, it might work for you. But I found that they just, uh, they just came apart. Okay, so after you get this, you know, the, the white on, but I would, I would try it. If it's a hardier leaf, it might work better. Okay, so now I'm lifting this off. It's kind of cool. And I'm lifting this off. Okay, and you know, there's something about that that's really beautiful in its, in its own right. Now, what I'd like to do is kind of show you how to get some veins in something like this. Taking a piece of paper with an edge and the paper should be um, strong enough that it can uh, be bent a little bit. So again, using the white, and this can be white, uh, doesn't have to be acrylic, but if you have it, I, I did ask you for that because we're gonna be using it in a few different ways. Um, here, I'm, I'm just putting white along the edge of this piece of paper, okay? Just white along the edge, and you, know, you have to see how much is is going to work for you or not. And then uh, this leaf, you know, maybe I want it to be like that. And I'm going to press down. And see, it makes like a really pretty kind of thing. And then the one on top, you just don't go as far down. You don't go as far down. And you can bend it the other way. Okay, so there you see what that's doing. Now you can get back in there. And if you wanted to add some of the finer ones and some add some more to it, you could certainly do that. If in fact, after this white was dry, you wanted to go on top and change it, not, you didn't want it to be white. Uh, you wanted it to be, you know, one of the colors that you've used. You could definitely do that. You don't want it to be as strong, but it's, it's a really um, pretty way to, you know, express something about the season. Karen, um, I'm taking screenshots as you go along here. Okay. Um, but we used to get, uh, I think, videos. Oh, are yeah. they doing that anymore? They are. In fact, uh, Michelle had said uh, right up front in the class that this was going to be one that was going to be paid a great deal of attention to and always be a video. Oh, good. So you're going to be able to see it again. I know I wish, I wish it could be a direct video, but there I, you know, see how pretty that is. I mean, that's my opinion, of course, but uh, what is, what is the reaction to what you've seen today? Anybody? I love how they're all so different, but they give you that same, uh, give me that same fall feeling, but in such a different way. And I like how you put the abstract option there. Yeah, me too. I, I love that, the, the, the veins that you're making. I mean, who knew? Just a simple piece of Just cardboard. A and that adds so much to it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I love it. I love it. It almost looks like you used uh, masking fluid. Right. Um, yeah, true. True. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you can make these in color make these with bigger leaves i mean the options are just just wonderful and they're all out there what i would love uh to see is uh here's 
here's our three ideas here. Our three ideas for today. And uh, if you pull back just a little, we'll be able to see all of it. We're we're seeing just pieces. Okay, I'm gonna actually I'm yeah. gonna move the. Uh, Thank you. I'm gonna move the tray forward. Oh, hang on. There. Now, let me see if I can pull the camera back. How's that? Any better? No. Yes. yes absolutely. There we go. So here's one, you know, where you saw the, um, this is where we did the dropping color with the, you know, with the ink tense pencil, depending on if you like it or not, you can use it a little bit, you can use it a lot. Um, here's direct drawing and where you paint directly in there, but you draw underneath first and use a contour drawing. Don't be so uh, concerned about, you know, the accuracy, be more concerned about the character. And of course, these, uh, you know, these little stencil dies. I just love that. I think it could, you know, <clears throat> it could end up being a fabulous big painting. And Those could be great designs for placemats. Oh, yes. Who's that? For an, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Yeah. You're for, right. an, for an aut autumnal table. <laughs> no, absolutely. absolutely. Right. Right. This is so pretty. Right. Or, or um, cards. I'd like to do cards. Cards, oh, too. Yeah, yeah I love that. Absolutely beautiful cards. Yeah. And, you know, the joy of getting a card from someone that has been handmade. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. So if, are, there, are there any more questions? Because that's, that's my lesson for today. Thank well, you. Karen. Yes. It's Janice. Um, what sizes uh, are the brushes? What size, Janice uh, Lee? Yes. How are you? How are you? Oh my goodness. Um, <clears throat> what size are the brushes? Well, um, let me tell you the flat brush. The flat brush is a three quarter inch brush. Um, the two other brushes that I'm using today were a number wow. 10 and number eight. A number and, 10 and eight? Yeah, 10 and eight. And I love this brand because I'm not selling it, but I love this brand because it holds the paint really well and it goes to a point really well and the brand here is silver black velvet they sell them on amazon and i think i've seen them in jerry's silver black velvet it's up to you but that's what you need and you said the flat brush is what size that was a three quarter three quarter inch flat and this this i don't have this in a special. okay okay yeah. Okay. So that's the lesson for today. And next week, I, I would love, first of all, I would love to see anything that anyone does using any of these techniques. Just love it. So Thank if, you. if you would send me, you know, my uh, email address is in the chat down here. Let's see. Um, maybe I should do it again. Where is that chat wall? Where is that chat? Okay. Oops. Chat. Okay. Let's see. What do we do to everyone? We want to do to everyone, right? Karen? It, 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 Karen, it looks like Donna has something to show. Oh, I, I, I tried. I didn't have the intense marker, and I didn't pick up leaves at first because they were all brown. So I ran in the backyard <laughs> and picked up the real fast. Anyway, so I just used the... Um, Hey, I use the um, black um, watercolor pencil for now, just to try it along with you. Beautiful, Be yeah. absolutely beautiful. I'll tell you, so many here's things. My, can here's my leaf. I put. <laughs> yes. Now, somebody said, "Well, what would happen if you used that kind of setup and you uh, put them, put those leaves right on top?" I actually did try one like that, and uh, it it was okay. It was a bit. Here, here it is. Um, I'll, I'll show you what happened to it. Let's see. Where am I? I'll go back to where I am. Oh, there I am. I am. Okay. So, hmm. I want to spotlight myself here. Uh, that's my... Why does that say? Remove all pinned videos? No, we don't want to remove, right? Um, so. Okay, yours. Well, oh. here's one where I did the background colors 
And then I, uh, when that was dry, I laid the, the like you had your uh, group of leaves. I laid the actual leaves right on top. Yeah. That's and then I did. I did the white around it. And as you can see, where, hmm, where are you? Apart. You're not. They, they, they broke apart. Okay. I can't, I can't see where you are. Um, can you put it on your table? Put it on the put table, on, Karen. Oh, put it on the thank table. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Let's see if I can get that to be the main, the main deal. It is. It is. It is the main deal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. I kind of like that. <laughs> well, there was some, you notice I, it did not go in the garbage. It's still here. <laughs> and, you know, there were some things that I did like about it, but I, I sort of like what, what was happening there better than here. But it was, it was interesting. It was nice. Karen. Yes. It's Grace Kiernan. Hi, Grace. I, how are you? I take class with you with Diane. I have two questions. Does the class start at 930 or 10? 10. Oh, it does. Okay. And was there a list of supplies that we should have gotten? Yes, it's on the outline, which uh, I guess most people got. But if you didn't get it, you need to send me an email and I will get that right out to you. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. You're Thank welcome. you. Thanks. You're more than welcome. Your and email I again, please. You haven't put it in the uh, chat. Oh, you know what? I, That's so me. I know it's your birthday. It's Bastille Day. That I remember. That's right. So <laughs> to everyone. And why isn't it going there? Hmm. Start typing? No? Well, I can start typing again. How's that? All right, try it. <laughs> You know, who knows about this stuff? Oh, my God. John, you know. It's not. Yeah. Well, just dictate it. I'll, I'll just. Here call. we go. It's coming up now, right? Bastille Day. Bastille Day 14 at AOL. Okay. It didn't come up. It didn't come up. Why not? I don't know. Let's see. If I push enter. Hey, there we go. Yeah, enter helps. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, boy. It usually does. And when all else fails. <laughs> okay. So that's the lesson. And as um, uh, Michelle said, they will be... Um, I wonder how I can get this big again. How can I get that big again? Get, Which get what big again? Your the table. The table. Um, you're big on it mine. Is. I think you already are big. Yeah. You're we can here. see it. If we you, if you we press see. speaker, we you see it. See, you can see the speaker. table. If we yes. see speaker vote. Yes. 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 Your yes. table is spotlighted. Oh, okay. All right. Because on mine, I'm seeing Donna. Hi, Donna. And I'm seeing myself and I'm seeing the table. I'm seeing all three things. Okay. So yeah, you just need to un yeah, you need to you you've spotlighted Donna. So now you have to undo that in order to yeah. spotlight. Unpin her. Yeah. Unpin her. Unpin yeah. her. Okay. Let me see. Oh, boy. Remove. Remove pin. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now I have. Now we see your lovely face. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. And then the table. And just to review, we started out with uh, dropping color in, which was this one on the end. We started with that. And then we went in there and did some scoring with the color and the sticks. And I showed you what it was like to either have, you know, a lot of dark, a little bit of dark, a pattern. So try a few things. I mean, it's only a piece of paper and it's your time and uh, an effort. And it really is, is worth the effort. Great. Thank you. See you next week. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Great project. Bye -bye. Appreciate Thanks, it. Karen. And bye. Send me, and send bye, -bye. bye bye. Great, send me, send great stuff. Things. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Karen. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Take care.